job is to spot <laughs> lethal. Yeah. And he's not very good at it. But... All right, George Mason, Druid and Mage left. University of Wall. Mage and, I'm oh, sorry, Warlock and Druid for them. And it uh, looks like they're going to throw out the Zoo Warlock again, and they wow. do match up into Mage, so that Kazan Mystic might be a keep in this opening hand. That might be a four keep. Yeah, and contrary to the last matchup where uh, Secret Palin's extremely favored against Zoo, this is a matchup. This is actually one of the reasons why Tempo Mage has become very popular recently, because Zoo has always been a deck that's in the metagame. This is actually the first time in years that Zoo is almost kind of out of the metagame. So there's, there's one less deck to keep Tempo Mage in check because Tempo Mage against Zoo is a very hard matchup. There's a lot of things like Arcane Missiles uh, and Flame Waker that's kind of very hard to use against Zoo because of all the Death yeah. Rattles and Ruby and Eggs, Hunter Creepers. So all these like random missile effects, they don't really do their job against Zoo very easily. It's one of the reasons why uh, it's usually a hard matchup. Maybe the local Quebec meta has a lot of Zoo. Yeah. Maybe the, the poutine that they're feeding everybody causes people to play zoo. <laughs> I would be surprised. <laughs> you would be surprised. No. I, poutine, poutine can do some crazy, crazy things to your body. No, I, I lived in Vancouver for a, a little bit. Poutine was weird. <laughs> it's delicious. It's uh, my favorite food. Poutine is your favorite food. It right? is. We're not judging here. <laughs> Whoa. What's your favorite food? Sushi. Sushi, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. I thought you were going to say something like pizza. <laughs> no. Pizza's my favorite food. <laughs> we're not judging. You said you could be honest with us. I am honest right now. <laughs> right now. <laughs> okay. Well, George Mason going to try and flip the board here. Uh, that mad, mad scientist is, could come back to haunt them later on. Yeah. My control tech. <laughs> That's very good. That could be Zoo. incredible, especially with an imp gang boss on the board. Uh, interesting, because you usually want to play your stuff as tempo for tempo mage. That's you know, why the deck is called tempo mage. But this might be a card that you can actually consider saving in your hand. I'm yeah. not sure. Okay, they just decided to play it. it. It makes sense, because they have such a big board lead right now that... You know, it's going to be hard for Zoo to get the four right now and just beat, you know, the game snowballs from tempo, right? So getting, when you go from three to four minions, it's like, since your your minions are dying one, one by one for the trade, but since you have so many, it's like only one dies every turn, right? So yeah. you can just kind of snowball the damage in the tempo. It's kind of how the, this tempo match works. Kind of like the decision to just go for the tempo MC tech here. Yeah. Now Laval has to make the decision to trade into the Mana Worm or the Sources of Prentice and they... Uh, I think that, you know, the Sources Apprentice is the higher value target. Arcane Blast picked up. Not really too amazing uh, against this board because Imp Gang Boss is, you know, doing little amounts of damage to it. Yeah, I'm definitely expecting the Mad Scientist to trade off for something here uh, just to get down the secret. It's kind of going to get punished by the Kazan Mystic. Expect to see Arcane Blast on the Imp Gang Boss. Point. Makes things so awkward if you yeah. don't have the four damage to deal with it cleanly because uh, if they trade two things into this imp gang boss and leave up the one ones, then those could trade back for their entire board. And since they're out of nearly out of resources, which is Arcane Blast and Doctor Boom, which isn't going to come down for two more turns in their hand. Yeah, the really boss is one of the reasons why this matchup is so good for Zoo. Yeah. Okay, they actually decided to just leave up the imp gang boss and kill the small threats. Yeah. Here comes the Kazan Mystic. <laughs> uh, it's uh, they do have to think if they want to, you know, give them a Ruby egg because that is one of the best targets that you can give. Or you could just give them nothing and or take you their give secret. Them and take their secret. <laughs> I think that's probably yeah. better. Yeah. <laughs> and George Mason needs to pick up a threat. RK missiles. That's a pretty good one, actually. Yeah, they can clear the board here if they get some good missiles. Mana Worm will be buffed up to three attacks, so it can trade into the Kazan Mystic, but now they have to worry about, well, we need to pick up a creature before we play Dr. Boom, or else we're just going to play it into that near ended. They actually Arcane Blast first, really believing in the heart of the cards here. Oh, jeez. We'll see. They're going to sit back and hope. <laughs> and three perfect <laughs> missiles. A nice, clean, Their clear. Faith is rewarded. Yeah, and they don't look too happy, actually. They actually look a little bit stressed, so... Uh, Nurbi and Egg Boy Terror is a pretty big 
uh, swing, but they know that this Mana Worm is posing some issues, so Haunted I like Creeper. The, I like the Haunted Creeper and Egg here. Yeah. You can afford to take the 7 damage, even though it doesn't feel that good, but one of the big things about Nerubian Egg in this matchup is it's very good at absorbing random shots, and also it's very good at utilizing your buffs like Defender Rogers and Power Overwhelming. Mm -hmm. If you just trade in your Void Terror here immediately, like a 4-1 is really good at trading into your into your 4-4. Four, 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 or even into your 3-5. Yeah, exactly. He, they could have mitigated this kind of trade here by just uh, not, you know, not even Void Terroring and just playing the Creeper and then next turn using Defender Vargas for the last damage. Yeah. Well, the Zubalak doesn't utilize Flame Waker very well. Usually the only spell that they run is Power Overwhelming. So... Which is not a spell that you want to use just for the two damage. And they will be able to trade into it pretty cleanly. Wow, that's a pretty good top deck eventually. Eventually. Yeah. I mean, since there's a <laughs> Creeper on board. Combo's really well with Implosion, and Implosion is likely coming up here. You can kind of get a read of what's go going to be drawn in the future based on you know, cards that haven't been drawn yet and that are two outs, so pretty likely that it'll come out sometime. Wow. Void Caller. Void Caller's a pretty good pickup. Yeah. Uh, they don't have to... I was thinking this turn, they maybe could be able to knife juggle or doom guard and only discard what they drew uh, if it was something that they were okay with throwing away. But now they can play Juggler and Void Caller, and uh, Void Caller is sort of a tempo play in itself as long as you have a deep, because it's really hard for your opponent to deal with everything. I think Laval was thinking about playing Void Caller without playing the Juggler first. Uh, that could be because they don't want to ping the Boom Bot. I'm not sure. It's definitely a turn that you have to think about the sequence a lot, because if the Boom Bot kills some of your minions, you won't even be able to trade for Dr. Boom. Yeah. So it might be better to just go ahead and kill Dr. Boom first before dropping the Knife Juggler and Void Caller. That way you don't risk your 4-4 four, four, or your 2-3 dying to the Boom Bots. Yeah, I like this. In fact, I like attacking first. That way uh, you at least have some chance where... Whoa. Wow. <laughs> Goodbye, Knife Juggler. <laughs> Goodbye, Knife Juggler. You lived it, a good life. Yeah. I was going to see you have less chance. Oh, <laughs> what a pickup from wow. George Mason right off the top. Better. Either target is fine. I'd say Doomguard is still better to hit the face, but that's a really... Oh, wow. Target. Tap is a bold move, but I think they have to go for it. This is when you just YOLO it. Uh, you can't try with Ragnaros. That's just too much health to go for. It's actually a pretty big miss by not playing the Shredder in the middle because this is a situation where it actually matters a lot. You, know, you yeah. can easily see the Dim or the Ragnaros hitting the Shredder, and yeah. then it, it, it being in the middle would have been a lot better. Here. Sometimes that damage matters, yeah. yeah. Just setting up for the double ping. The is the game say. over? It does hit the Shredder. That's not a dire wolf. <laughs> but, oh! Implosion! Okay, Implosion this is really juggler. good. Okay, so what I feel you do is you just tap, and then you kill the two small minions. Now you have seven minions on board. Seven minions. Maybe not seven, but it's a lot of minions. Yeah. And you just leave up rack and just race. Right? Yeah. I think you even tap, just go full and yellow. In fact, I mean... Maybe kill the mana worm first, or... Yeah, maybe... I don't know. Oh, they are killing the rack. Well, there's still, still a full board clear. Is Laval actually not playing tapping this turn? Because normally you would tap before playing it, right? And I feel like with the way they're playing, they're not playing on tapping. Uh, it does make sense. Now you're not dying to Fireball. Wow. GMU is ripping cards off the top like it's nobody's business. Wow. Double. In the second Arcane Intellect. That's some pretty good draws. You're very Into Archmage and Tinnitus and a natural Fireball. Yeah. All they have to do is ping face and then next turn they win yeah. pretty much no matter what. Yeah, I they... feel like playing around Fireball like this doesn't actually make that much sense since you're still losing a Fireball over two turns from the ping. Yeah. So there's no way you're threatening lethal fast enough anyways. Yeah. I, I almost feel like they might as well have just gone yeah. for it. Even even as far as like leaving Rag up because they give him the better chance, they spent eight damage killing Rag. If Rag didn't die here last turn and they just and they hit an imp after, I could see them just winning the game this turn. Yeah, and looks like George Mason University with that fireball out of the Arcane Intellect will be able to take this game a really close yeah. one.
GMU ended exactly at eight, so I <laughs> if this rag did take eight damage, yeah. you know, it might have been <laughs> lethal. Yeah. Uh, it would have taken a creature off the board though, yeah, so maybe. it, it would have been a little bit closer than it actually was. Yeah. But George Mason, fist bumps all around. Throwing out that Mason hat, and there are the somber faces of the University of Laval team. <laughs>